Today, we are thrilled to have Sheikh Abedin on Technogram, Reddington's podcast channel, where we showcase untold stories of the tech world. With over 18 years of enterprise sales experience across cybersecurity, SaaS, and cloud, Sheikh Abedin is the Regional Director for Meta at Securonics. Known for exceeding targets and leading high-performance teams, Abedin has helped a lot of top enterprises across Middle East, Turkey, and Africa solve challenges in the digital world. Abedin, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to uh, be with you and discuss some of the interesting topics in cybersecurity work. For sure. And I think more, before we get into the whole cybersecurity-related questions, I would like to know, how did your cybersecurity story start? What When did you know that cybersecurity was your calling? And I think you're one of the people who have been in cybersecurity core, cybersecurity for a long time. Yeah, that's um, it was not by design, I would say. Uh, but what has happened is after I completed my master's in uh, marketing and sales in uh, Bangalore, I started working for a startup company, uh, primarily focusing on uh, networking and IT, mm -hmm. which was a uh, convergent communications. And in that company, there was a requirement for uh, encryption solution and a firewall. And this is way back in 2002. Okay. Right? And that time, there were no many branded uh, firewall technologies. You know, maybe there were Cisco and NetScreen, but not many. So, Convergent Communication decided to develop the technology in-house. Okay. So, I was, was um, dealing with the cowboy programmers day in, day out. Okay. So, that gave me a lot of uh, exciting information and the uh, and the potential of cybersecurity world. So, the knowledge that I acquired those uh, during those two years has given me confidence that the future is all about cybersecurity. And I stuck to that uh, industry up till now, up till now. Do you remember any incident or any instance where kind of uh, when you were in that role and you said, okay, this is a very, very interesting field and I want to explore this more? Yeah, yeah, this is one very important uh, change in my uh, life. What happened is once in the year 2002, uh, Convergent Communication participated in JITEX. Okay. okay? And uh, we had a stall in JITEX. My CEO, Venkat, he said, uh, we have a stall. We don't know who to take for this, uh, you know, manning the stall. And you being one of the sales, key sales guy who knows cybersecurity, why don't you join me? And be in, this, in the booth, whatever comes. So when I, I flew down with him, I was in JITEX for five days. And during that time, the technology that we developed called Unified uh, uh, a firewall UTM solution. I ended up getting an order in the five working days, uh, uh, which my CEO was not aware. So I said to him that after five days, why don't you carry on? I want to stay back for a couple of days. So he asked me, why do you want to stay back? I said, I have some opportunity that I want to see if I can close. So he said, okay, fine. So I stayed back. And after two to three days, I got the order uh, for 50 units of uh, the UTM, mm -hmm. and I went and I put the order in front of my CEO. He was shocked <laughs> that you know we didn't we didn't expect a business transaction to happen in such short notice, and that gave me a, a, a kind of a, a pleasant surprise. It is possible, and this is the this is a real pain point for most companies who are in the cusp of uh, adopting internet into their corporate world. That mm -hmm. time, the internet was just about. Uh, uh, getting adopted so there you go that was my first order amazing uh, so from that was your first exposure to dubai as well yeah, like, yeah, like, absolutely the first visit so i went with an order so <laughs> and how many years have you been here now i'm here since now 22 years uh, so one year after i did that order so i came back to dubai uh, i had so many offers because of uh, the jitex participation right and now we're approaching under jitex this must be your which edition of jitex yeah, 22, 23. 23, uh, as you have participated. Participate, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I think it's my 11th or 12th. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's one of the biggest IT exhibition, I suppose. So, so uh, from from back then, when you were saying that there were a lot of pain points that you, were, you could identify, mm -hmm. and if you compare that to today, what is there any pain point that's still a constant or has it evolved? I think uh, the pain point is complexity, right? Uh, the complexity, if you compare it to the past and now complexity, yeah. it is much more complex. 
But for any point in time, what you're experiencing is complex. For those those days, customers who were very accustomed to uh, uh, not connecting to internet and just trying to open an internet connectivity for browsing and accessing email, that was very complex. Right. You know, what you put firewalls, you put proxy, all of that. And and now if you're looking at uh, fast forward 20 years, we see that now we are talking about AI, uh, you know, poisoning LLMs, we are talking about uh, uh, identity theft, we are talking about uh, ransomware. Yeah. I think those people would be very happy in this right. fight. <laughs> those problems now seem a little small. Very small. Okay, and at Securonix, uh, you lead the... Yeah, so I'm the regional director for Securonix. I was uh, hired uh, as a first employee for the Middle East. Okay. Today we have around uh, 12 to 15 people uh, in the region. Uh, we provide uh, uh, the sales, pre-sales, uh, project implementation, customer success, all through the region. And the 24 bar 7 uh, support happens from US, uh, UK, and India. So was there any project that you would have worked on recently that was uh, exciting as well as kind of a game changer? I would say every project is, is very exciting because as a salesperson, acquiring and winning uh, a business from a very valuable customer is important. But there are definitely some of some which would stand out, as you said. One of the largest oil and gas company, one of the largest bank in the region, in the country, uh, the airport authority. So there are many of these large uh, uh, flagship companies uh, in the region. Uh, we have won those projects and they, many of them are using our solutions to protect their uh, 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 cyber assets. Okay. Can you also tell me briefly, like, what are the challenges or pain points that we discussed? What is Securonix trying to help? So if you see, uh, if you look at cybersecurity technologies, uh, you can categorize into uh, three areas. Uh, number one is preventative technology, something that you will implement, which will prevent you from certain breaches, certain threats, such as firewall. It will help you from uh, external oriented threats. Uh, then there are technologies which are uh, governance are related. For example, you will do penetration testing, risk assessment, uh, and to see uh, uh, if you have vulnerabilities that you can mitigate them. So that is more of a governance related. And then there are technologies which are detection. Because even after you put all the preventative controls, you still will have some kind of breaches. So how will you detect? In spite of doing everything in your capacity, if there is a breach, I should know, right? The Securonix falls under detection technology. We call it as SIM, Security Information Event Management. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we collect signals from every device, every application, whether it's on-prem or cloud. When we say the signals, we're talking about logs. So every activity that happens in, in these devices, it's, it logs. Right. So this user accessed me and did this with my information. So this information we collected and we correlate this information to say, okay, this looks like malicious. This looks like suspicious. This is okay. This is not okay. And with the help of those signals and correlations and, and, and analysis, customer is able to take a decision. I think we are under attack. I think there is a possible data exfiltration. I think there is a there is a likelihood to, uh, of a ransomware attack. There is a likelihood of uh, somebody trying to uh, change privilege or access privilege accounts, all of that. So there could be thousands of combinations that you can detect using Securonix. So Securonix is a SIM solution. So uh, there are multi, multiple other solutions in this category. Many of them would know Splunk. Uh, IBM Curadar, Logarithm, Microsoft Sentinel. These are the technology that we compete with. And uh, so far, we have been very successful in the market. We have now around 35 to 40 customers in the Middle East who are using Securonix uh, mm -hmm. as, as their go-to cyber defense platform. So it's really difficult to understand when you're under threat. That's what I'm trying to say, right? And you need to you need to know that this is happening. Yeah. So uh, with have there been cases, I'm sure there are, like where... Um, the customers have found out that they were being affected only because of the Securonix technology that they have. There are many incidents like that. If you're looking at uh, uh, Verizon data breach report, uh, average, uh, it takes more than uh, 70 to 80 days before you detect that you are, you are, you are breached. Look, By then, it's probably too late. Yeah, very late. 
And many customers, some of IBM reports talks about 180 days, and many of the research reports talks about and, and everything that, that they are saying is that about 80 days in average. And the cost of every breach in a, a breach today is around $4 million average. Okay. So that means any customer, nine out of 10 customers in the UAE in last two years has been breached in some of the other things. They have been attacked. So if there is a full blown breach, uh, and if you come to know too late, the impact is maximum. The faster you know, the less is the impact. For example, if if 10, 10 signs of a breach can be detected, for example, nobody is going to come into your house, directly go to a safe and take the stuff and go. Before he comes to your house, he will be doing scouting. scouting. Yes. He'll be roaming around your house to check what time you go, what time you come. And then he might come in a couple of days in the night to see, you know, what are there any cameras, are there any dogs? Sure. And then he will do all of that analysis. And then he will break into one door, then he'll break into second door, then he will do the quite of scouting to see where the valuables are. Yeah. So in, in this entire process, there will be a lot of alarms, right? Bells. He'll make noise here. He'll break break open this. He might he might you might catch some you know a loud third in your and and then maybe your safe might ring a bell. Right. So similarly, in a breach, what happens is if somebody gets into your network, there will be telltale signs. There will be alarms. So Securonix, uh, what it does is collect these alarms and tells you that there is a possible. Uh, attacker in your environment. There is a possible uh, insider likely to leak your confidential information because we see there is a pattern of behavior which uh, which states that he is with the, with a malicious intent trying to cause damage. I, I think you explained it really in a very nice way that we can all understand easily. Yeah. And if I had to compare it, it could be something similar to like when you're going to a doctor where you don't, by the time you are showing symptoms, it's already too late. Yeah. You should already have the preventive and also be able to understand when it's happening. Yes, and sometimes when you detect uh, that you are under ailment, it's too late in the day. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so that's the, that's the analogy that we can think of for yeah. this. Uh, you spoke about ransom. Bit. That is something that we have seen a lot of that happening in the recent past. Uh, any particular incident or story that you could share that stood out and it ended in a good way? The thing is that uh, today, uh, majority of the attacks are originating from phishing here. Okay. If somebody has to send a payload inside your network, and the email is one thing that you cannot block. And if something comes to your corporate email, it will be allowed. Right. right? Now, what happens is today, most people uh, are used to opening any corporate email without it. You know, knowing where this comes. So there are some things which we see is type of squad and mean. So for example, you have reddingtongroup.com. Right. So you get an email. Janice getting an email from maybe Katie, your right. managing director, says yeah. that, uh, Janice, can you please do one thing? Uh, just open this document and uh, make this particular changes and give it to uh, keep it in my desk. For example, you would you would love to do it because he's your MD, he's asked for the first time yeah. for you to do something. Keep it. So you, what you would do is you would go uh, check the email, there's a link, and then you click, it looks like it's KD, he has got his signature, everything is there. When you click, and what have you, it will take you to a website, and it will download a payload into your PC. While you would do all that, what he has asked you to do, actually what you have been, in the background, you have been compromised. Your PC is compromised. Now with that, comp you're being pro your PC may not be the target. You are, now you have become a pawn. Okay, right. you have become uh, a Trojan. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, from your PC, there will be a lateral movement into other corporate environment, uh, maybe your file file share, maybe a SharePoint where the confidential document is there. Now, in this entire process, we had several incidents in the region of such kind. When we, what we do is, if your own is detect, detects type of started demo, domain. What in this case, what happened is, reddingtongroup.com is Reddington Group G R O O P. Oh, okay. Okay. Everything is same, but that last instead of O U P, it is O O P E. So will there always be a slight difference? There is one F one. That's one kind of attack which we call as type of mm -hmm. domain. So the domain it looks very similar to your company domain, mm -hmm. but it's not. 
and it will have everything that looks, uh, they would have copied your signatures, your lookalike, your uh, everything. There is no suspicions that you can derive until unless there is a technology like Securonix. There are there are a few technologies which does Securonix, uh, we were able to detect that. So even when, uh, so first of all, we were able to stop that and get an alert to uh, the, the security operations team that there are uh, uh, targeted at attack on your organization with the methodology that was employed was type of spotted domain, which is similar looking domain and trying to compromise uh, those PCs and then get access to confidential data. This is one of the most common ways of doing things. Yeah, one of the common ways. So this also brings me to like talking about AI and ML, right? Yeah. So I want to talk about how they use it and how we use it to kind of uh, keep keep things safe. Yeah. So I've heard, um, we have heard stories about how there's a Zoom or a Teams call. Yeah. And you have your, you mentioned Katie, so he's our EVP, so he's on the call. It's his face and he is telling us all to do things, you know, things like that, where your company's head of the company is in the call and talking to you. So it, the face is there, but it's not really him. And the call is entirely, you can see your colleagues, but it's probably not them. So those kind of things also. Those are, yeah, those are deep fakes, right? Uh, deep fake is going to become more complex to detect. Uh, the thing is, uh, that's why, you know, one of the things that somebody asked me in the last interview that, do you think... AI can replace human beings. Mm -hmm. If you see AI, AI is trying, trying to emulate human intelligence, not the human emotions, right? So you can can you cannot catch if you are trying to if, if the AI is successful in emulating the intelligence. You know you, you but the emotions are very difficult to emulate. How would you? Uh, we say that hunches. So yeah. when you talk to somebody, you know that he's lying. Yeah. When you talk to somebody, you know that he's nervous. Uh, there must be something beyond what he's saying. These are the things which is difficult for a technology to understand. N not yet there. So AI would find it difficult to understand uh, uh, these kind of defects. So you must need a human intervention sometimes to do it as of now. The other issue that I want to do, uh, tell you one story which is very important today. Uh, so let's take a, you know example one of the example story that I want to tell, talk about in the 1970s, in the outskirts of London, okay. uh, there was a sawmill. The sawmill, so they bring timber and they cut it into nice pieces and uh, you know pieces and they make furniture out of it. There was a man uh, called Robert was working there. So uh, every day you know uh, he's been working for a few years. So what happens uh, is one day after his hard day's labor, so he was uh, leaving the factory uh, and he was pushing his wheelbarrow, okay? As he approached uh, the gate, a uh, security guard comes and says, uh, hi, robot, uh, what are you taking from the factory? Uh, so he looks at the wheelbarrow, there is a box inside the big wheelbarrow. So, the robot says, uh, nothing, it's just uh, sawdust. Okay. Can you please open this for me? So he, so he bends and he opens it and he finds his wheelbarrow. So why do you take this? He says, so when we do the, uh, uh, you know, we use the saw machine, so we collect a lot of sawdust. And normally we throw this. So I want to use this for uh, my kitchen. I want to cook some food and this is a, one of good source of energy for us. So okay, there you go. Hmm. So next day, Again, same thing happens. Mm -hmm. Robert is pushing his wheelbarrow. As he approaches the gate, the security guard comes and says, Robert, again, you're taking some box. Right. What do you have inside this? He says, same thing, sawdust. He opens the uh, sawdust, uh, the box, and it's a sawdust. There you go. So second day, same. Third day, Robert is taking the wheelbarrow. Again, there is a small box inside that. As he approaches the gate, the security guard says, what are you taking today? He says, same thing, sawdust. Can you please open this for me? Again, he opens it, it's sawdust. Okay. So the security guard this time is looking at the man, Robert, and says, you know what? I have a hunch. It says that you're stealing something from my factory, this factory. I don't know what it is. Why don't you tell this to me now, or else I'm going to come to your house together and I will find what it is. Mm. So this guy, Robert, gets very nervous. So he says, uh, 
uh, what if you tell me, my manager, I lose my job. So he says, I will not tell the manager if you tell it to me now. Right. Otherwise, I will find out, find out coming to your house, then you will lose your job and you will be arrested. So he says, uh, do not tell anybody. I'm taking wheel bugs. Ah, interesting. <laughs> See, every day he's been stealing wheel bottles in, in front of the, the security gate, security guard. Everybody is watching him taking wheel bottle, one wheel bottle every day. Right. And they could not uh, fathom right. that this man could steal a wheel bar. Mm -hmm. And they were going behind a small sawdust, right. with a box inside that. Inside the security, so if there are many wheel barrels in it. Right, something which is very obvious, yeah. uh, you, you overlook. In today's circumstances, everybody is talking about AI, machine learning, sure. uh, generative AI, <laughs> LM models. What they don't understand is that this generative AI is a real part. Okay. Because this generative AI is not written by your company, it's mm -hmm. by third party. Mm -hmm. And if that can be poisoned right. or manipulated, Every data that you have sent it to generate your AI can be manipulated, can be misused. So how do you protect your uh, your your investment in generative AI tools by you know by uh, from getting poisoned, by uh, uh, from from getting exploited by hackers yeah. or malicious uh, people? So this is one one wheel barrel. The other wheel barrel uh, that we have is the state actors today. You mm -hmm. know, in current geopolitical scenario, the kind of wars and the kind of uh, uh, the the trenches that's happening between yes. these, these countries, every country in last four years are investing millions of millions of dollars to build capability which can, uh, imp uh, what do you say, uh, which can cause damage to the enemy state. So the state, the country, the sovereign go governments are are uh, employing technology process and people for an offensive uh, attacks against others. So cyber uh, threat uh, originating from nation state is the next big challenge for most companies. And it is not going to be limited to government sites or mm -hmm. things like that. It, so the objective is to cause our economy, mm -hmm. which means every organization which is employing people, which is delivering some service in the country, will, will, be, under, under, will be affected, right? Will be affected, yeah. Okay. So my question was around, what do you think is the biggest challenge for channel partners when they talk about cybersecurity to their customers, when they have to sell it? So the biggest challenge uh, for a uh, distributor or a reseller is to stay relevant in the transaction. The reason is now gone are the days when we used to go and give the boxes as a firewalls or, sure. or antivirus solutions or all of that. Now everything is delivered from the SaaS on the cloud. So customers can approach the vendors directly and buy it. Right. From, and all vendors are, are making it available uh, uh, for customers to buy directly. So if that's the case, how do how do partners make themselves relevant? Because customers knows that if I bring a partner in the in between, the price will go up. Mm -hmm. So the partners, what they need to do is they need to build capabilities on whatever technologies that customer wants to buy. So what happens is customer does not have the capability, for example, securities to uh, implement a, te a technology and uh, run the technology uh, within the organization. They always need uh, expertise. Okay. Now they can take expertise from Securonix, they can take expertise from local partners. Right. The, the, Securonix is not or does not have a massive team to support every customer in the market. And we will we might become more expensive. So the local partners who have got skill set will score well in front of those customers. So because they can offset the cost of onboarding with their local sources and then become cost effective. As well as services also will probably help. Yeah. So this. So if if a partner has got capabilities, so they can he can offer a lot more services, which can uh, establish more value of the same solution. Uh, but value can be experienced much better with with the local resources who will be giving them ongoing support. Okay. Uh, before I let you go, I just have one last question, Abhi. Uh, you've been here for 
a long time. So you must have seen things come and go in terms of trends. So what is that one trend in cybersecurity that that excites you and you think it has to stay in power? So the again brings back to LLMs, generative AI. These are the things that we are in the very early stage. We are in the tip of the iceberg. I think for the next eight to ten years, the potential of AI, generative AI in the cybersecurity world is going to stay. And that is going to open a lot more job opportunities for newcomers and also going to make many the old folks, if they don't update themselves, irrelevant to the market or, or obsolete in the market. So I, what is exciting is change is constant. And if you don't change with time, you will remain obs- obsolete. Thank you. Thank you, Abit, for your time. Really enjoyed talking to you. And hearing all the stories and uh, all the best. Thank you, Janice. Pleasure meeting you. Look forward to speaking to you again.